I'm very worried. I mean, the pandemic has shown the enormous fragility of the world, uh, not only in relation to um, the COVID. I mean, we have fragilities in relation to climate change, to the lawlessness in cyberspace, even to the risks of nuclear proliferation, to the, to the impacts of inequality uh, uh, in the cohesion of societies. But the, the, the virus, that is a microscopic virus, has put us on our knees. And unfortunately, this should lead to a lot of humility in world leaders and to unity and solidarity fighting the COVID. Now, there has been no unity. Each country has adopted its own strategy and we see the result. The, the virus has progressed uh, everywhere. And at the same time, there has not been enough solidarity in relation to the developing countries. And we see how in the developing countries, people are suffering so much. And to a certain extent, this is negative for everybody because uh, if we are not able to address properly the COVID also in the developing countries, the virus goes back and forth and um, we will pay a heavy price uh, even in the richest countries in the world. What would you hope governments and community to do to overcome and emerge stronger? We need everybody to work together in cooperation. And now we have a, a good test and the test is the treatment and the vaccine. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely essential that a vaccine be considered a global public good, a people's vaccine, and that we won't have a competition of countries trying to get as many vaccines as possible for themselves and forgetting about those that have less resources. We need a vaccine for everybody, everywhere, in affordable uh, uh, conditions, because we will only be safe if everybody is safe. To think that um, we can preserve the rich people and let the poor people um, suffer, it's a, it's a stupid mistake because uh, um, there is no way uh, everybody will not pay heavy price if uh, not everybody is properly um, supported by uh, the vaccination. Yeah. So we know what is our objective. And our objective has been defined by the scientific community. We absolutely must limit the gross in temperature to 1.5 degrees, namely at the end of the century. For that, we need to have carbon neutrality in 2050. And for that, we need to have a reduction of about 45% of emissions uh, in, in the next decade. So the objectives are clear. How can we reach them? We need a total commitment, especially of the big emitters, to all the transformational actions in energy, in agriculture, in industry, in transportation, uh, in all areas of our life, uh, we need transformation actions that make it possible to reach those objectives. And it's very simple. We should stop spending money, taxpayers' money, in subsidies to fossil fuels. We should massively invest in renewable energy because it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. It's most profitable. It's, it's not only the right thing to do, it's the best economic thing to do. Um, uh, we need to stop the construction of uh, coal power plants. We need to invest uh, in uh, uh, new forms of mobility, namely through electric cars. We need to invest in hydrogen, that is the, the fuel of the future. Uh, and at the same time, we need to conduct uh, um, protection of biodiversity, protection of forests, uh, transformation uh, in transformations in uh, uh, our agriculture. Uh, uh, in, in all these aspects, we need to work together with a common strategy and with a clear objective. We need to be carbon neutral in 2050. Uh, the 2030 deadline set for the achievement of the 17 sustainable goals is really not too far away. Uh, how should world leaders refocus effort uh, to achieve SDGs, after all, it's our blueprint uh, for a more sustainable and equitable planet. Well, because of the COVID-19 and the need of, to recover our economies, we are spending trillions of dollars at the present moment. So if you are spending trillions of dollars, let's do it in line with the Sustainable Development Goals. Let's do it in line with the Agenda 2030. Let's uh, uh, rebuild our economies better uh, with more equity fighting inequality, with more sustainability, fighting climate change, and addressing all the other aspects that are relevant in the Sustainable Development Goals, be it the eradication of poverty, be it uh, the protection of the oceans, be it uh, 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 things related to education, to health, uh, to governance. So the, the COVID is a threat, is a problem, but it is also an opportunity. Because as we had to change, we can change in the right direction. As we are mobilizing massive resources to rebuild, we can rebuild in the right direction. And our blueprint must be the Agenda 2030 and the Sustainable Development Goals. A very strong commitment of use to international cooperation. Uh, 
the young generation is much more cosmopolitan than my generation. They feel a universalist approach uh, to problems. They understand that we need to be together. And so uh, they understand that we need a, a, a stronger multilateralism, but a multilateralism that is also a people's multilateralism in which they can participate uh, in decision making. Uh, and this very strong commitment uh, of the young people to ideas like universal health coverage, to ideas like uh, uh, climate action, to ideas like uh, uh, more justice and equality in our societies, gender equality, um, fight against racism. All these aspects show a very committed young people that is the biggest hope I have in relation to our common future. Um, some 25 years ago, the Beijing Declaration was a historic turning point for advancing the rights of women. But millennia of patriarchy have resulted in a male-dominated world. What would you like to see men do to ensure we have gender parity, parity and equality? Men must understand that it is in the interest of everybody, not only of women, to have gender equality and gender parity, because the world will be better. Uh, it is true we live in a male-dominated world with a male-dominated culture. That is why it is so important in the UN to reach parity, and we have done it at top level, but we now need to do it everywhere. There is essentially a question of power, and we need to have... Uh, I don't like to use empowering women. It looks like we are giving power to women. Power novel is not given, it's taken. But we need to have women moving in order to assert their role in society and we need men understanding that that is a positive thing even for them. It's very shocking from the point of view of wealth and income to see 1% of humankind having more resources than half of the world population. Uh, but I would say the most shocking aspects of inequality are not necessarily linked to money. It's the inequality uh, linked to discriminations in relation to gender, in relation to uh, in relation to racism, uh, in relation to religion, in relation to um, people with, dis with disability, in relation to the LGBTI community. Uh, I mean, we need to have a society in which cohesion is our objective, in which we need to invest in the cohesion to make every community, indigenous communities, uh, uh, com minorities in societies, every community to feel that uh, their identity is respected, but they also that they are part of the society as a whole. Uh, Mr. Guterres, finally, the word, the last word is for you. This is uh, a virtual General Assembly, uh, devoid from the usual fanfare, but full of urgency and gravitas and hope. What would you want world leaders and the public to take away from this UNGA 75? Well, of course, many things. But if I would have to choose three priorities, I would say, let's make sure that we have a global ceasefire. Let's make sure that we'll have a vaccine that is a global public good, a people's vaccine. And let's make sure that uh, when we rebuild our economies, we do so to reach carbon neutrality in 2050. Thanks. Thank you very much.